everyone, it's Wendy from Wendy Patterson Art. Um, sorry that we can't go ahead with the live stream this morning um, with everyone on the internet this morning in my household, including my husband who's now working from home due to the lovely little COVID-19. Um, our internet connection for the live stream is really poor. Um, so instead what I'll do is some filming this morning of some of the activities we're going to be doing today in the class. We'll post that later on. Be assured though, um, we might schedule some evening classes which I think may work a little bit better with less people on the internet. But today we're actually going to start playing with what's in the box for April um, this year with Two Sisters Art. Tanya has bought us a fantastic range of textile um, mixed media products. Um, one of the big things that I think we're going to really enjoy because this is going to be versatile and allow us to create some really interesting things, um, which is the Jo Sonia textile medium. So I'm going to be using that with um, our pens and also the uh, basically like a, a pastel dye block. Um, I'll also be using it with the Attila um, acrylics that Tanya has available to her store and also using it with the John's, the, the, sorry, the Joe Sonia um, acrylics. To step out a little bit on the edge, I'm also going to be using this um, with the intact blocks. Not everyone has these. Um, but I just thought, I, after our, we had our pastels box last month, that um, pulling out the ink tents, um, they are a an, an very bright block. Um, so we're going to see how we can actually play with those. So first of all, today's little tester, um, I'm going to start playing with the pastel die sticks. So we can use it in a variety of different ways. One, we can actually, just drawing lines on there, we can make block shapes. That comes together quite okay. okay. So much as around the edges a little bit, I think if I was using um, these to block in, I may even use one of the pens maybe to get a definer edge. Now with fabric this morning to prepare, I simply washed these a couple of days ago um, and then ironed those. It was recommended to actually wash fabric before using the markers and also the crown. It takes away some of the starch that's actually on the material when it's actually manufactured, um, allowing for the pigment to to stay a little bit better on this the fabric. So that's not too bad. Now we have got a stencil um, and rubbing over the top is probably going to be a little bit awkward plus there's some really fine details there that um, I think if we went too hard just rubbing over the top would break off so why don't we try to do a bit of a rub a different rub technique so it takes me back to school days where You'd go out with the teachers, get your crayons, and you'd start rubbing on leaves, um, branches, bark, and just get the patterns coming through. Don't like that. I might draw a couple of little colours there. I think something like this, you could actually get a couple of bits of fabric, do this rub on technique um, and actually then sew these blocks together. If you put this straight back into the washing machine after 
putting these products on, it will wash off. What you will need to do is actually do a heat set. Um, one way to actually do the heat set is putting some baking paper over the top of this and then ironing over the top of it just to make it, um, I guess, sink into the, the fabric um, and just make it a color safe then. You can then go into the wash. So I really like that effect. So that's putting the stencil in underneath and just rubbing in over the top. And they actually blended well together. Just see how we can run together. Now I haven't used these before and wasn't quite sure how they were actually going to to work on the materials but they actually seem to blend quite nicely and together especially when you've got um, you know you're choosing the appropriate colors to just have that slow mix through so they've come up nicely um, I have seen some designs that are just using the striping on the fabric with these blocks. But I think later what we might do is create a larger image and I think blending in maybe some birds, something cute, maybe something even for Easter. So I'm really enjoying the way that those crayons are actually coming up. Okay, so we saw before that the black marker actually worked quite well just around the edge. So with the markers, they have got um, a medium sort of end and also then a finer end. So I think that'll actually help a lot especially with broad lines. I want to press lightly, the lines are actually quite long, I want to press a bit firm to get that nice dark colour, so there is a nice variation in there. With these pens there doesn't appear to be a lot of bleeding into the fabric. Now this fabric is nice and firm, I think if you were going to be doing it on um, t-shirt material, just use a test corner just to make sure that there isn't too much bleeding. You may have to vary how you actually use those pens on different sorts of fabric. So it gives a very nice blocked color. The blocks, I think, blend a little bit better. Um, the pens don't seem to blend as much as well, they do if I'm, it's a little bit wet. Drag those colours in to blend a bit. Now with the pens, unlike the blocks, you don't have to heat set these, but you do need to allow these to dry for 24 hours before you actually start using these ones. I do like the colours that come up. What I might do is just, while well, that's a little bit drier, just adding a bit more on top. You can even see just a faint line there that this side is a little bit darker now. So 
looks like you can build up on the layers to give you a more intense color block. Now I have got my backing down on the table so just be careful if you are not um, having a protective cover on your table um, doing it on the kitchen table or anywhere or if you're doing it on a t-shirt or a backed bit of material put a bit of cardboard paper in between you can see there there's a little bit of bleeding through if you were doing it on a t-shirt and didn't have that backing that would go straight through to the other side the colors are quite intense you can see there this is the lighter section this is where I've done a double up of the colors and it has brought out a little bit darker coloring do love the blending of the blocks there okay we might move on to some other sampling now now I am next I'm going to do is actually using the textile mediums with a few different products um, but before I actually start playing with that I'm just going to draw a few patterns on here so we can then color in those blocks um, so we'll just get started there we'll put this into fastering do a couple of things here we're going to work with the acrylics and do it in two ways one applying the acrylics straight up with um, the textile medium and the other one is um, adding um, some textile medium with a little bit of water down first sorry enjoying a cup of tea as we go so the reason why I'm going to look at two different ways is that this is rather um, thin um, and it will um, make the acrylics a little bit watery. So my concern was is that applying something a little bit watery, especially onto fabric, we may see a little bit of bleeding. Um, by drawing these shapes around first, I'm not quite sure if that'll actually help with the bleeding. Uh, just experimenting at the moment. So I'm going to put in um, Tanya's sheet that she handed out to us indicates half to half. So I'm just going to do two little colours here. And I've done the same actually with the water mix. So with this mix it was um, half textile mix and half water. So what I might do, so this dries, is that you can tell I've had a little bit of colour still in my, might help us see it actually. Didn't wash out my brushes previously very well. So I am just going to add a couple of um, pre- done leaves that are going to have just this textile medium down first. Now the textile medium when it does dry will make this a little bit stiffer. If you do um, lost for words this morning. If you're a sewer and do quilting I think this might actually add something to some of the designs creating your own painting images and using those blocks then into uh, your quilts 
wall hangings. So it smells a little bit. Once again, at least I've got the protective sheeting down there. I'm going to let those dry. And then we'll come back and add the colour over the top. I'll do a bit half and half. So this is my first day of holidays. I've really been looking forward to this. I've got two days off. Oh, sorry, two weeks off. I'm glad it's two weeks, not two days. Um, as a nurse, it is a little bit daunting with what we are facing at the present stage. But hopefully if everyone is doing the smart thing and doing as has been recommended, which is staying at home, isolating for this period of time, here in Australia we are hoping that we will actually see a lower curve on that wonderful COVID graft. Um, it's important to probably listen to what is actually being put out by government agencies and also looking at um, if you're in Queensland, if you go to the Queensland Health website and actually look at um, their section on coronavirus, it'll give you some good information and tips. Um, please don't fall into the, the trend of um, believing everything social media tells you, um, treatments and cures and things like that. Um, listen to your healthcare professionals um, and just keep safe. So those little areas there, we're going to allow those to dry off um, and then we'll do these little ones and see how they actually go with our paint. As you can see by putting this down, there's actually not a lot of bleeding there, so I'm pretty happy with that. And this may actually not bleed at all. So I'm going to start with the Joe Sonia acrylics. Now you would have received some of these in one of Tanya's previous boxes with two sister. I'm not sure which one it was. So the acrylics are nice and smooth and I love the colours with the Joe Sonia. And being a Joe Sonia product with this textile medium they should actually work quite nicely together. So I'm just going to mix these up. You can hear some strange noises. Um, little Iza is at my feet. At the present stage, she's actually having a few nightmares by the sounds of it. Um, normally, when I'm at home, it's nice and quiet here. I only have the puppies, but everyone seems to be doing the right thing and are at home around the place. Yesterday, my neighbour started making some big noises, so hopefully, this morning it won't be too bad. So you can see from there that the actual with the mixing it hasn't seemed to actually um, degraded the colours in any way at all. They're still quite nice and vibrant. So I'm going to start with the brilliant violet. Now with the textile medium into your acrylics what you will need to do um, they do need to be heat set um, now Tanya has provided recommendations on that little handout in your box you can either do it two ways one you can actually use in your oven and Tanya's given directions there on what you need to preheat the oven to and how long that needs to stay in for um, so just be careful though, if you're using synthetic products, um, the oven may not be the best place to actually put those. Uh, make sure you have your ventilation on maybe just in case it starts to smoke a little bit. The other way is to actually iron. And once again, you'll still need to test the area just to make sure that there's not going to be a colour fade or a colour change within your items. Don't put the iron directly down on top of what you're um, heating. Put a baking sheet over the top and just start in small areas um, of medium heat and just see how you go with those colour changes. So I'm pretty happy with those. There's no real bleeding as such. So my concerns 
with bleeding onto material. Uh, not really fancy for this at the moment. Yeah, but this is a nice thick material to actually play with. If you were playing with um, some lighter fabric, um, pillow slips or t-shirts, you might find that with the lighter cottons there may be some bleeding. seems to be lovely too. They actually sit very well on the fabric. Um, you'll actually find that when this is drying, as I said before, it's going to get a little bit stiffer. So what we'll do is that I've got the Utilia range there now too. We're going to do the same with the Utilia. I'm just going to add the paint first. Now all of these products that we use in Tanya's Art Sample Box from Two Sisters, um, they're all available at her online store. Especially I think in the current climate, jump online. Um, if you have any concerns just give Tanya also a call and get yourself a little survival kit. Um, a mix of mixed medium products, um, some pens, pencils and really use this time just as a little bit of a downcharge, recharge, getting a balance back into life. In some ways, this um, event that's happening worldwide, for me, I'm looking at it as more of a positive way, of trying to anyway, is that we probably do need to take a step back and look at the way that we do run our lives generally. Um, being at home, Mind you, this is day one for me, but I'm a little bit of an introvert, so I'm actually looking forward to this bit of quieter time, just being at home. Hopefully the family will still stay intact, but it's just still allowing ourselves to have time as individuals, time as a group. Just enjoying the moments, take things a little bit slower. Now, even with a little bit more of the mixture in, these two um, it hasn't thinned as much as what I thought it would have so it's still a nice consistency and I think with these as well we won't see too much of a bleed the colors are still very vibrant and no deterioration at all Once again, no bleeding on here. I am just wetting my brush down just with a little bit of water as well. It's um, quite warm in my little art studio today. Definitely not anywhere near winter here in Queensland. And the humidity being Brisbane is at its wonderful high levels again today. And just a shout out to all of our wonderful friends um, and regular presenters on the Two Sisters website. Um, they've been doing a fantastic job with all of the uploads that they have been putting on there. If you're not a member uh, on YouTube yet, jump over to Tanya's YouTube site which is Two Sisters Art, um, subscribe and don't forget to hit that little bell and that will give you automatic notifications through your email that we've got a new video up online.
So these acrylics with a medium. Once again, they're not causing any issues with the bleeding. They're actually coming out quite lovely with being nice and vibrant. Very good. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to add, once I finish off this little one, I'm going to add to the ones that we actually did a prime to start with. So now that I've got the two days off, and I'm on <laughs> two days, I keep saying two days, now that I've got the two weeks off, I'm going to, to be at home. I'm going to self isolate myself. I've got everything I need. And each day I'm going to be jumping into my little art room and creating a few more videos so you might see them on a regular basis. Um, and I'll try to get ahead with some things um, and catch up on a few more of Tanya's art boxes. Um, and do some bigger samples. We will attempt to go live again. I think the evenings might be a little bit easier than the mornings. Mornings are just a sample piece and as I said before I'm going to try the ink tints so they're from Drew um, some of you earlier on if you've been subscribing to um, the two sisters art sampler is that you would have received ink tints pencils so they are basically the same sort of thing but they're in the blocks they can cover a lot more area um, the blocks I find um, great to work with in the sense that if you want finer details use the pencils but the blocks um, allow me to be a little bit freer a little bit more creative at times 
So we're going to use that. We'll start by just making another shape. Make a couple here. I haven't tried this before. I've seen a few videos and we'll see what we can do with these products. So the ink tints go on very nicely. They're quite smooth and placed onto that material. Now if you left them without anything else on top, they would uh, wash off. They are going to need something to actually help them set to the fabric. Similar to when we use the ink temp pencils, is that once you start adding water, they activate and they take on uh, that ink that is in the actual medium, the, the blocks or the pencils themselves. So it actually blends quite nicely over the top. So one, you can just come in and add mortar over the top. You see that blends quite nicely together. Because I've got a black line already around there, it doesn't appear to be any sort of bleeding there much, but we might take some of this out of the box. And I think once again with this being a heavier fabric, there isn't much room for actually bleeding. The edges are a little bit defined and I think if you add more water you'll see more bleeding there. Okay, so I'll add a little bit more. They are soft, similar to the um, medium sort of pastels. They're not as hard as the hard pastels that we used in last month's box. But the colours are absolutely vibrant. They're creamy and easy to use and to place down. Um, I love the intensity of the intense blocks. Saying that we could probably do, we might have to do another video on using the pastels with this medium and actually see how it actually works on material as well. So this is using our um, Joe Sonia textile medium. The blending is quite good. It's similar to actually putting the water down. The big difference we may see is that after I do a heat set of these um, paint blocks is that after we do a wash I'll come back and actually show you the end result. The, main, the only difference that we see here is actually um, after the actual wash using the textile medium. So. It appears even now that this seems to be a little bit more vibrant. It seems to lock onto the colour a little bit more rather than using the actual plain border. Um, and once again, there doesn't seem to be a lot of bleeding. The rough edges are just from me pushing everything out into the colours there. So that's not too bad. Now I'll just try. So you can just put a block down here. Just a lighter colour and we'll see how it blends through with that. It actually t helps take that through so it's a little bit lighter than what we had up above. Build some depth with this, so I might come over the top and 
adding this while it's still wet, the ink is really picking up on that fabric. Getting that nice dark edge, we might see how we go with a bit of another colour on top. And I'm just breaking up the tints today. I'm just going to try something else. I just want to see if I can pick up colour. Just to reduce maybe some colour. So, when I'm playing with the mixed media, watercolours, acrylics, I just like to be able to lift up some colour to actually see what's underneath, just to give it lighter. Picking up my brush, but it's not really changing the intensity that's there on that sheet. Okay, one other thing I want to try is we'll put it just over here. Now we've allowed that one to dry, I'll just see, just over the top. It goes down pretty similar to what it was before, hasn't changed that at all. using a dry end of that bud, the other side's still a bit wet. So let's see if I take it out. Having that section down does allow me to blend those colours while they are dry. Um, not the same sort of quality if I take that off to the areas that haven't got uh, the textile medium on. So it does change it just a little bit. So just the water. Similar sort of reaction by putting the water down on top. Now, now that this is dry, this is what we had with the pens earlier on. Just wanted to see how that is if I drag some water over the top now. So it hasn't been the 24 hours, but you can see there that even with putting the water on, um, they you know, under what they recommend, it isn't set yet. You can see there now, even just after an hour or so, there is no bleeding. It's not picking up those colours. So, I'm really enjoying the effects of some of these little items. That's great. The intense. And as I said, I know all of you haven't got them, but maybe try using them with the intense pencils that you have, or even trying them with the pastels. Um, to maybe use them with the pastels, what we could actually do, and I'll just try a little sample here. Yeah, just looking for a little sheet. Okay. It's right there underneath. Um, so when I get stamps, stamp blocks, I actually try to um, keep these rather than discarding them. I actually find that when I put them down, um, they actually uh, allow me to have a little palette. Now what I might do is we might add just a little bit of gesso. Just a 
a little bit here and there. Now, I've got my craft knife. What we might do, and you can do this with your pastels, is just to put a little bit of that. We'll make some colour there. I love red, so I'm quite making it quite intense. And we'll have some yellow. Blend those in together. My dry weather down here, this is actually um, reasonably thick with the gesso. Because the gesso is white, we have got that nice pale yellow. Hoping for a nice dark pink here. So to increase the intensity of your colours, it's just adding a little bit more of that pigment each time. That's nice. I actually don't mind it with just that blend of white coming through as well. So with this, I'm just going to add a couple little drops of our textile medium. Do you like those colours? As I said, if you want to increase the intensity of those colours, just add a little bit more of the pigment. Now, if you find that they're just not flowing onto your material, what we can do is just add a little bit of water. Just mix that in so it's just a little bit smoother. That's quite nice with that the intense. I like that pastely sort of look. Even with it being quite fluid, um, watering it down and also using the textile medium, there's not a lot of bleeding in the fabric there. So it's come up quite nicely and it's sitting up. You see there those colours are actually quite defined and they're quite vibrant. sample is totally dry now. Um, you can see in some of the areas there was a little bit, bit of bleeding and that's actually from um, where I've actually put the textile medium down first. Um, I put a thinner colour and you would have seen a little bit more water and it went out um, along that area where the textile medium was so you can actually create just a little bit more depth in the toning and the highlighted area. 
but it did when I actually started putting the textile medium around everything. You can just see a little bit of bleeding coming out to the side. Also picked up a little bit of colour when I got too close to the edge. But that's okay. We're going to put now just a bit of background blending. I just want to see how the colours um, blend together. What I'll be using is these colours again, but I'll be adding it with a little bit more water. Um, so it's thinner. I do want to see if I can get a nice bleed effect coming through um, and just seeing how it works um, just with the different colors coming in together so I'll put this part on speed with a little bit of music I'll be back I think we've had fun, to, well I've had fun this morning um, with the swatches that we've done here. So really impressed with the way the, um, the pastel dye sticks have come out, really like that rubbing. I think I'll do a project that we'll do um, another filming for so we don't make this too long. Um, and I really enjoy the way that the, uh, the pens have worked and also just with the added of the intent had so much fun with those so just remember experiment with the different mediums you have with that textile medium um, and let me know how you go so the one that we've just finished off I'm going to allow these to dry um, before I wash them and then I'll come back and I'll actually show you how they've actually set um, particularly this one so one area I'll have to do a heat fast on um, I'll use the iron instead of putting it in the oven be just because I've just got a couple of different um, sections that don't need direct heat we'll give that a wash and then I'll post on the closed Facebook group just to show you how that goes um, with this one um, I envisage that once this dries, I'd like to come back and do a little bit of doodling over this. Um, I really liked the way that the colours have actually bled, and this is just using those acrylics, nothing else, um, with that textile medium. And just doing those splatters on top really give that movement sort of feeling in the background, so I'm pretty happy with the way that that's actually turned out. Um, the other image that you saw me draw initially before this one uh, we might save that up and do a project for that using the acrylics um, and the textile medium as well okay thank you so much for joining me sorry once again that we couldn't do a live event but hopefully this will give you an idea of how to use these sample products thanks a lot stay safe and i'll see you soon bye